Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. So we are looking at the world's most powerful, most feature-rich, fully loaded smartphone. This is the Asus ROG Phone 3. It's the third generation or third iteration of it. And the hardware on this thing is just on another level. Every component of it is just maxed out. Literally the fastest, best stuff you can get. It's loaded with a Snapdragon 865 Plus. So instead of the regular Snapdragon 865 that you see on all the other flagships out there, this is the overclocked version that pushes out some extra performance. 16 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna let that sink in for a little bit because that is so much memory. Like that is probably more RAM than most people have in their gaming desktops. This is crazy. It's got very fast storage. UFS 3.1, there's 512 gigs of it. And the screen is also, of course, the fastest in the market right now. 144 Hertz, one millisecond response time, and then juicing this whole system is a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. It's huge. It's the same size as last year's model, but they've made some tweaks to make the whole battery system so much better than the previous versions of it. Now, all the components I've talked about so far, the individual parts are very impressive, right? It's like the best of the best. So to achieve the best possible performance with this crazy powerful hardware, they had to have an upgraded thermal system compared to last year's model, right? So it's the same size and shape as the ROG Phone 2, like it's the same weight and everything, but because this is rocking a more powerful chip, a hotter chip, and it's rocking 5G antennas, 5G modems, there's just more stuff to do inside this thing. So the thermal system has to be a little bit more efficient and they've built a phone that they say can get rid of its heat very effectively. Now, if you look at the back of the RG Phone 3, the vent on the back is actually a little bit smaller visually than last year's model, which I thought was a little bit strange because I imagine this would be a harder chip to cool than last year's Snapdragon 855 Plus, but clearly they've made enough changes on the inside to compensate for it. Now, the rest of the exterior has also changed quite a bit. This looks a little more technical to me. Like you can see through the glass and see the inner design that they've placed on the side here, but I don't know if I like it more like I think the ROG phone 2 looked really nice it just had that right touch of like copper accent to you know flex a little bit of gamer but not really this I don't think this is super gamer or anything but it just looks less unique I also don't like the smooth glass on this thing I definitely prefer the textured glass and the red power button not on my watch so it still has the accessory port on the side where you can connect the bundled fan to cool the system down a little bit better when you're playing games. Also still has air triggers on the other side and you have your USB-C port on the bottom. You have your SIM tray, which holds two SIMs, but no expandable storage. And you also have your ROG logo that lights up to your heart's content. It's very customizable and it's actually reasonably bright even in daylight. The emission this year, however, headphone jack. There is no headphone jack and we gotta have a talk about this. I am someone who is comfortable with certain companies removing headphone jacks from their phones. But when it comes to a gaming phone, it just makes absolutely no sense. It it boggled my mind when I first saw this. Like when I first used it, I first got this in, I didn't even notice it. I didn't read the instruction manual. I was just like using it and I went to plug in my, my just AirPods uh, or EarPods. And I was like, what, what? How could they remove this? Now they include a dongle in the package, but it just doesn't make sense. Now. As for the reasoning, I didn't even reach out to Asus about this. I'm assuming it's for like a 5G antenna or, or something, right? There's gotta be a reason they removed it. They didn't just do this to piss people off on purpose. But the emission of a headphone jack on this particular phone is going to upset the audience that was interested in this phone in the first place. Like real simple example. When you're playing games, you're often depending on sound cues to do things. Like you're often using your ears to coordinate what you're doing. And if you're dependent on some kind of wireless Bluetooth solution for the audio, there's gonna be latency or lag. It just takes away from the game experience. So I'm normally not vocal about the removal of headphone jacks, at least not like this, but on a gaming phone of this caliber, you know, the, the, the compromised free phone from the past is now compromised. Okay, let's move on to the screen. 144 Hertz, one millisecond super fast and it's been improved over last year's model. The colors are better, it's more accurate and the screen gets brighter at peak. So it's a improved screen and games look awesome on it. Now, if I'm being honest, I cannot tell the difference in terms of refresh rate between the 144 Hertz and the 120 Hertz from last year. Like I, I tried on basically every game that I could test this on, my eye can't tell the difference. It's only a 24 frame difference, like 24 frames per second. But I was hoping to be able to differentiate between the two different refresh rates. I just can't though. The speakers have also been improved this year. These are excellent speakers. I actually think these are the best smartphone speakers on the planet. Like I've, I've personally never heard anything better. They're loud and very clear. 
RG Phone 2 already had great speakers. These are even better. The one thing though, like the stereo separation on these speakers are so good. Like you, when you have it in landscape mode, your left and right sound so separated. Like it's weird that this is coming from a phone, but when you're holding it vertically, let's say you're watching like, I don't know, a vertical video of some sort. The separation is also so significant that it sounds strange. Like you're hearing sound that goes above your head and below your head, and you can really hear the difference between those two sound sources. It's hard to describe, but it is a little bit weird. And I gotta be honest, I don't love it. But in landscape mode, it's on point. All right, let's talk about the air triggers. If you've never seen these before, they're these touch sensitive regions on the trim of the phone that simulate like the trigger buttons on a console controller. The very first time I saw these on the ROG Phone 1, I found them to be a little bit gimmicky. Two generations later, like this is the third one, I still don't love them. I feel like there's, like there's something inherently weird about pressing something that doesn't have tactile feedback. Like when you press it, you kind of want some physical feedback for it to feel proper. Now I will say that if you're playing a game and you want to use it as like a button that you press it and you hold down like a racing game and you want to use that as your gas button, it can work. Uh, it's just that for games where you want to shoot with it or where you want to tap it, it doesn't feel right, but it is just an additional feature to the phone. Okay, the battery is huge, 6,000 milliamp hours, but they've also included two software features this year that greatly improve the overall power system of this phone. So the first thing is that you can limit the charging rate. So the charger they include in the package is a 30 watt fast charger, which is great when you wanna juice it up real quickly. But in terms of the, the longevity of a device, like the lifespan of a device, if you're charging it at 30 watts every day, it's just gonna reduce the lifespan of your, of your phone's battery. You can limit it down to 10 watts. So it's not like a super slow charge, but it's slow enough so that you plug it up at night, it'll take a lot longer to fill it up, but it keeps the battery in a healthier state. And if you do it over the course of many years, you're gonna have a longer lasting battery than if you didn't. And the second thing they've added is you can limit the maximum charge your battery will hold. So you can reduce it down to like 80, 90%, and the, the purpose of doing it is again, to extend the life of your battery. It's something that a lot of phone companies don't really care about. And here's the thing, as tech reviewers, we usually don't care too much about features like this, right? Because we are encouraged, we're almost required to switch phones all the time to be able to, to test stuff for you guys, right? But if you're a consumer, this type of software feature is awesome. Like this will guarantee to extend the life of your battery versus a phone that doesn't have it. Like as long as you're using it, it'll just make your phone last longer. Electric cars do it and it's cool that Asus is doing it on their phones. It's definitely like an enthusiast feature. Like you're not gonna have like your, your grandmother's not gonna be doing this on her phone, but it's, it's for the people that would buy this phone in the first place. So cool that they have it. The camera system has three cameras this year. It's got your regular wide angle, your ultra wide, and they've added a five megapixel macro lens. Now. The shots I've taken with that macro aren't particularly impressive, but the other two are good. I'm not gonna go in depth on it, but I don't see like a major issue with these cameras. Truth is, if you're buying the ROG Phone 3, you're probably not purchasing it for its camera system anyways. But here's the thing. The gaming on this phone is super enjoyable. I connected it up to like the Microsoft Xbox controller and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Super smooth, portable gaming. So a few years ago, when I did my very first gaming phone review, I felt like the industry was not in a great spot. Like the hardware was kind of getting there, but the software, like games were just not good. Nowadays, they're better. I still wouldn't consider them on the level of consoles, let alone PC gaming, but I can see where this industry is heading. Now, that being said, these gaming phones are becoming like they're, they're starting to get crossover. Like if you look at like a OnePlus phone, OnePlus 8 Pro or like a Samsung phone, those have high refresh screens. That used to be the distinguishing feature that separated a gaming phone from a non-gaming phone. But now because regular consumer level phones have high refresh screens and they're packing some very good hardware, these things don't really stick out as readily. Like they're not as, they're not as unique as they used to be. So even if you did want a gaming phone now, it's not as obvious of a choice, right? So here's my take on it. I feel like if I was a younger kid and I was like 15 and I was drawn to RGB lights on my phone and I wanted the crazy stuff that comes with gaming phones, these are still really cool. I just don't feel like 
they're as compelling of a purchase as as a regular phone. I feel like most people should be getting just high performance regular phones instead of gaming phones, even if you are for whatever reason, a hardcore mobile gamer. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.